Hello, this is Dr. Smerat. I'm one of the interventional cardiologists at the Heart and Vascular Clinics. We're part of the Manhattan Specialist Center. I'm here today to talk to you about what we call a peripheral angiogram or a peripheral cath. This is a procedure that is designed to go and look at the arteries of usually your legs or inside your pelvic abdominal area, see if there's any clogging up inside of them, and if there's room for us to fix, fix it and help you, then we would. The first thing I want you to understand about this, this is not surgery. You're not gonna be under general anesthesia. You're not gonna be out. There's not gonna be a breathing tube down your throat. What we do is we give you what we call moderate sedation, which is basically a cocktail of medications to calm you down, to relax you, so that this is not an unpleasant experience for you. And a lot of people fall asleep during that, and that's okay if you want to do that, but we're still able to wake you up at certain points and talk to you if we need to. Now, the, the experience starts with you coming into our center. You'll be greeted by the nurses. They're going to put you on a bed, connect you to the monitor, establish an IV line so that we can give you drugs through that line. At one point, you're going to go to our cath lab, and really, you're going to lay on your back. And a lot of sterile sheets are going to cover you so that the procedure is sterile and will reduce the risk of an infection happening. We give you the sedation, you're comfortable, and then we start working. The way the procedure happens is you lay on your back, we give you the sedation we spoke about earlier, and then we enter through an artery in your groin. This could be on the right side or the left side. You gotta remember, all your arteries inside your body are interconnected, they're my roadmap. And I know my roadmap, so I can enter from any point and go to whatever destination I would like using some wires and some tubes. So for example, let's assume that the problem or the symptoms or the wound or the infection or the artery that I expect to be blocked is on your left side, the left leg. That usually means that I will enter through your right groin, an artery in that area. I give you numbing medication in that area, a pinch and a burn you'll feel for a few seconds or some fullness, and then the area is numb and you're not gonna feel anything other than my fingers pressing on your groin. And then I enter the artery, and with my tubes and wires, I can go inside and then travel my journey across the arteries to the other side and go down to the left side. You can imagine, I go up to your pelvis, abdomen, and then go down to your left leg. And then through my tube, I would inject a dye inside the artery. The dye usually will run in the artery, will take the shape of the artery. And the x-ray machine that's basically on top of you is going to see that dye, show it to me on a monitor. So technically now, I'm looking at your arteries. Usually, there's a couple of options here. One is your arteries are, will be completely healthy and open and normal which means basically this wasn't the problem. Our theory that your symptoms are because of peripheral arterial disease is not the true theory. There's something else going on and we'll continue looking for that and we're done at this point. This is really the best case scenario. The other possibility is that we do find disease, but that disease is not significant enough for me to start you know, open a workshop and start working on your arteries. So for example, if I find a 20% narrowing here, a 30% narrowing there, I can manage that by medications. I don't need to go on and fix beyond that. However, a lot of times what we will find is what we really expect is significant blockage in your arteries. That could be a 100% complete blockage. It could be 90%, it could be 80% and so on. Now, one question that a lot of patients will ask, well, if my, the artery is occluded 100%, then how is my leg still even there? And the answer is our bodies are designed to defend themselves. They, they don't just wait for us as physicians to come in and help them. They automatically start helping themselves once the disease starts. And usually, when an artery closes completely, that didn't happen overnight. That took time for months usually or years to close and your body started recognize that's happening and built its own bypasses or collaterals we call them um, to to give eventually blood to the tissue beyond so that's usually what keeps your leg alive but we know that collaterals will never do as good of a job as the main pipe the analogy i use here is is the highway imagine you're going on i-70 highway and at one point there's construction they're going to block the highway they're going to use the exit 
as a, a detour for you to get to the next point back on the highway. But you know you're never going to travel the same speed that you would like to as long as that detour is there. You got to open the highway at one point so that things would go back to normal. So it's really the same thing. We need to open that main artery because the amount of blood that can go through that, nothing can replace that. So if we find significant disease, now we want to fix it. And we fix it by multiple ways. Sometimes we might need the arteries calcified and we have to drill through that to open it up. Sometimes we use balloons that are deflated when we put them in through the blockage and we inflate them from the inside and kind of squish all the cholesterol back to the wall of the artery and open the artery. Sometimes we have to put stents in there and the stents are basically metal meshworks that will keep that artery open so that it does not recoil and close again. This usually will take about an hour, sometimes two hours, sometimes even three hours but most of the time this procedure will take about one hour or so. Now, from your end, from your perspective, really throughout the whole procedure you're going to be laying on your back. If you have back pain issues, that might be an issue if the procedure takes more than one hour, but we're aware of this and we give you sedation as necessary to make you as comfortable as possible. That's one. At certain times throughout the procedure, we might ask you to take a deep breath, breathe it out, and then hold your breath. That relates to the technology of the images that we acquire. Movement usually makes the quality of the images not as good or as crisp as I would like it to be. And then the third thing is usually we ask you to be as still as possible, especially in the legs that we're actually working through and imaging. Because again, if you move your leg, then we lose the quality of our images. Again, it's not easy for everybody to stay still for an hour or two. So usually what we ask you is, if you're going to move your leg, just tell us before so that we don't take a picture at the same time. And that's one of the reasons that we'd like you to be with us awake and able to talk to us throughout the procedure. Once we're done, all our equipment comes out and we're going to close where we entered, usually by way of a plug or a suture. And then you're going to need to lay flat on your back for another two hours after that. Sometimes, for different reasons, we cannot close the artery by a plug or a suture. At which point, we have to take the tube that we put out, and then somebody has to come and manually apply pressure over your groin area, usually for about 15 to 20 minutes, until the bleeding stops. And then you still lay flat on your back, but now for about four to six hours, and then you're able to go home. Now, what to expect after the procedure? You're going to be on your back for two hours minimum and maximum, I would say, four to six hours. Usually, you're able to go home the same day. God forbid if we get a bad complication, then we're going to need to transfer you and admit you at the hospital so we're able to observe you over at least the next 24 hours and manage whatever complication that happened. I hope by this I answered most or some of your questions about peripheral angiograms. Remember, if you have any additional questions, you need to always talk to your cardiologist and ask them about any concerns or issues that you or your family have about this. And thank you.